lights are off and away they go. Extremely loose. He's managed to hold on and they get He missed the, the complete bit. He's crazy. He's stuck. Side, is on the grass on the infield for four. He slices through. He tags Richard. The lights are off and the way they go. Extremely loose. He's managed to hold on and they get he missed the, the complete bit. He's crazy. He's side, Freitas is on the grass on the infield for four. He slices through. He tags Richard. With Indianapolis firmly in their mirrors, the drivers and teams pulled up to Road America ready to stretch their legs. Kimo Swaminen grabbed pole yet again with Dan Rash filling out the front row. Carl Williamson grabbed the pole in ST but could not make the grid. This gave James Stevenson the first spot in line and Stefan Oregard started beside him in second. The green dropped and Rash wasted no time by going from third to first by the exit of turn five on lap one. Connection issues for Clayson put Todd on his guard, but the blinking V Apex machine surprised the number nine, and the two had contact not once, but twice. Russell did it again later with Steve Brown, which backed up a huge pack. In the mess, Ray Prado showed them all how to take advantage of the situation. However, the first caution of the day emerged 15 minutes into the race when James Stevenson suffered a huge blow from his teammate after a spin. With Josh Lloyds having hustled his way from fifth to second since the start, he inherited the lead from the tangling AMS cars. Unfortunately, at the restart, Lloyds buckled under the pressure and outbraked himself at the end of the Moraine sweep, dropping multiple positions. This left Thomas Torp to carry the torch at the front of the ST class. But the yellow flags quickly re-emerged. Corey Fergus collected the unfortunate James Stevenson and the ensuing melee produced a giant repair bill for a slew of cars. Due to the timing, many drivers took the chance to pit, which mixed up the field and allowed Ray Prado to lead the restart. But with Suominen's pace, it only took a lap for the Finn to cruise on by. Patrick Bieri was doing his best to return to his form from Indianapolis, but an assisted trip through the gravel at turn one set him back yet again. Behind the Mustangs, the action was unfolding thick and fast in the ST class as Lloyds attempted to take third from Oregard. The racing proved a little too close and the contact sent them sailing into the grass. When they returned to the track, Torp was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The battle gave William Randleman the chance to lead some laps, but having not yet pitted, inevitably it would become Marco Mogren's turn in front. The cursed first position struck once more and Mogren made a mistake out of turn eight. This meant the fight was on between Marco and Arthur Chan. The lead swapped hands lap after lap until the final yellow was flown with a mere four and a half minutes left. Jeff Jacobs had put a period on his day with a hard hit into the wall at Canada Corner. Though there was some confusion as to whether the field would restart, the race wound up finishing under caution and Kimo came away with his fifth Conti win. He was followed home by Rash in second and Clayson in third. In ST, Mokren grabbed his maiden win in the series. Chan took a well-earned podium in second, and Oregard salvaged an impressive third in spite of his early troubles. From the old to the new, the teams have now left Wisconsin and are getting ready to test the uncharted waters of a new roval in the central U.S. Widely criticized as being too simple, previous events have shown the racing is anything but. However, the question mark will only be erased after 90 minutes are over as the Continental Endurance Sports Car Series takes on Kansas Speedway.
Hello and welcome to round nine of the Continental Endurance Sports Car Series here at the road course at Kansas Speedway. Hi, I'm Samuel Ryman. Alongside me in the booth is Kevin Brown and Richard Losper, and behind the scenes doing all the button pushing is Giancarlo Lenzi. Kevin, Kimo Swaminen and Dan Rash have been keeping us entertained with their championship battle all season long, yet neither driver appears to be in the race today. How do you think that will impact today's race? Well, Patrick Pierre being the only other Mustang driver to win a race this season, I think we are going to see Mustang drivers being super aggressive trying to get a race win that they haven't gotten in a long time. Well, that'll be very exciting to keep an eye on. Now we hand it over to our other commentator, Richard Losper. Richard, last weekend we saw several drivers in the ST field falter, including our points leader, James Stevenson. Do you think this field has put the last race behind them, or will some of that carry over the here at Kansas? Well, Kansas is a different track altogether. Hi, Samuel. Uh, James Stevenson is fast. He is qualified in uh, the second position, but we do have Carl Williamson in here. And uh, fingers crossed if Carl has a good race, which um, he doesn't seem to have a lot of good races or a lot of good luck here at, the, or at any track. Um, I think we're going to see a hell of a race. There's Dexter Castro in there in third place as well. So I do believe we're going to have a very uh, challenging and a very competitive race. Well, you may see uh, the GS Mustangs going around the Kansas road course right now, and it looks like they have all slowed down and qualifying is over. Patrick Beery, Pippin, Brian Strobeck to the pole at the, in the closing seconds there. Kevin, you seem to um, notice that a lot of the GS drivers were, uh, we have some teams in this series, and a lot of the teammates were working together trying to, um, trying to get the draft, trying to get better lap times and qualifying. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, we saw Brian Strodbeck and Steve Brown, both members of Turn 2 Motorsports, working together trying to improve their draft skill. And we saw uh, Russell Clayson and German Afanador, both members of VA Apex, working together. But it seems to have all been for naught because Patrick Bieri, the loner uh, out there, has pipped them all in qualifying by uh, almost two tenths. Yes, two tenths of a second over Brian Strodbeck and Steve Brown. Brian's teammate lined up in third. And um, it looks like Cole, and Dra Cole Williamson, James Stevenson, and Dexter Castro all close times at the top of the ST field. Now, Richard, this uh, track is a little over two and a half miles in length, but it only has six turns. You and Kevin aren't the biggest fans of this track. Why not? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that question. Well, this track is mostly oval um, and very little of it is in fact a road course. And the actual road course, the layout of the road course is not exactly one that um, excites the imagination, shall I say. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a pretty easy track, but it's gonna catch a lot of people out, Samuel, because um, people are gonna think, oh, this is a, a really easy track and there's all of this oval section to, uh, to make my moves on. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun track, perhaps, but certainly not a very technical track. And I think uh, we're going to see a lot of cautions here with that huge oval section. Yes, and also the way in which a field funneled down into Turn 1. Anyhow, um, the field about to roll off of Pit Road right now. And sorry for any technical difficulties we've been having at the beginning of this broadcast. Looks like it's all fixed now. Knock on wood. Uh, Kevin, would you like to take us through the starting order of a GS field? Will do. Well, as we mentioned, Patrick Bieri, uh, who is the only other driver other than Kimo Swaminen or Dan Rash to have a win in the GS field today, is on pole position in GS with a 126-690. On the outside of him will be Brian Strodbeck. Uh, rows two will be Steve Brown and Todd Hansarenko. The third row will be Ray Prado and Randolph Chenoweth. And then following that will be Russell Clayson and Elliot Huffman, German Afanador, James Alex Brown, and then Jeff Jacobs finishes up the uh, GS qualifying. But uh, let's make a couple of changes to that. It looks like Todd Hansarenko will be starting from Pit Road, and Randolph Trenoworth will um, be starting from the rear of the field for some reason. I I'm not really sure what's going on right, right, here, uh, right here, Kevin. 
Yeah, not quite sure either. It looks like Hans Renko actually retired. Uh, so, and then Chenoweth appears to have gotten an EOL penalty. I think he had an incident during qualifying, so that maybe that's why he's getting a penalty. Um, but we have not heard anything from uh, from the marshals at this moment. It looks like uh, telling the ST drivers to go behind Chenoweth so he may be able to retake his place in line. Whether they'll add another lap or not remains to be seen. But it does look like Todd Hensarenko will not be starting. Richard, the, uh, the field are uh, about to take the green flag here, but would you like to take us through the uh, top five or so in the ST order? All right. It's Carl Williamson on pole with James Stevenson alongside him. Dexter Castro in third place. Matthew Reinol and Stefan Overgaard round out the top five. And it looks like the pace lights are still off. The field about to come into NASCAR turn three here with Patrick Beery in the red and white car starting on pole. Brian Strobeck in the black and orange car starting on second. Now, uh, Patrick is um, in a points position, so I'm sure he'll be trying to play it safe. Brian... I don't think he's been in that many races so far this season, so we'll have to wait and see what his approach is. I'm looking at the six spot starting spot right now. I still can't see Randolph Trenoworth will be starting at the back of a GS field, but he is up there with the GS cars. Todd Hensarenko is not. Pace car is off. GS field in control, led by Patrick Beery. It will get on the gas in a moment here when the green flag flies, and it does, and the Trias field is underway. Now there's a tight chicane coming up that they'll have to navigate through. Turns one, two, and three coming up here. Patrick trying to get single file in front of Brian before they get into the first turn. We know Brian and Patrick are both very fast, but looks like our main single file, and so far they're through cleanly. We handed over the Richard for the ST start. And the ST has taken off. Uh, James Stevenson uh, took off ahead of Carl Williamson, but Carl Williamson, of course, had the inside line for turn one. He has now taken the lead. James Stevenson follows him uh, into turns two and three with Dexter Castro just behind them. Uh, and, of course, Stefan Obergaard then in fourth place. So that is the start uh, in fifth place, Matthew Reinel. That's the start of the ST, all single file at the moment, uh, Samuel. Yes, and I see a big dent in the front nose of Randall's Trenderworth's car. I think he ran into the back of someone in the first turn as I watch Steve Brown going wide for third place there. Now, Kevin, Patrick Beery has gotten off to a big lead, but you think I'll be short-lived because of this strong draft going down the back stretch that Brian has here. Yeah, there's a huge draft for the Mustangs on this, uh, this fast banking, and they carry a lot of top speed. So it's going to be very easy for the drivers uh, trailing to uh, catch up in the draft and, and uh, maybe make mincemeat of anybody that's in front of them. So uh, second place will be very, very strong um, for sure in the draft. As we can see, Strodbeck moving up pretty quickly in that draft. Yes, but catching is one thing, passing is another, and I don't think Strelbeck is going to be able to catch Beery here anyways. However, the battle for third is quite another uh, scenario. It's Ray Prado and Steve Brown run side by side. Elliot Huffman goes out onto the bank in to avoid them. You're not supposed to be up on the bank and enter in turn one, but uh, he did that to avoid an incident, so I'm sure they'll let him get away with that. Meanwhile, it looks like there's still a strong pack up front of the ST field, uh, Richard. Absolutely. We did see uh, just then with uh, Dexter Castro um, thinking about making a move on uh, James Stevenson uh, when they were on the oval section, but he thought the better of it coming down to turn one. Uh, Samuel, we best explain to the viewers uh, how the uh, people are supposed to negotiate this track because there are some rules about entering the oval and exiting the oval. Yes, well, um, basically there's three rules that I know of. Entering turn one, you have to be on the flat apron part before you get to the turn, basically where pit road ends. Uh, that's the first place. The second place, there's a rule you are not allowed to merge onto the oval plate, onto the oval circuit until the dotted and lines Dexter on Castro, the backstretch. Sorry to butt in there. Dexter Castro has spun his car on the entry to the oval. And he's lost a bunch of positions there. So Dexter Castro now falling back to about 7th, uh, 8th, or possibly even 10th place. Uh, Samuel, sorry about that. 
Yeah, so uh, no need to apologize, Richard. Actually, I think I've only two rules I could remember, and that pretty much covers them. Now, Richard, you think we should be keeping the camera on Dexter today because it's been a while since he's raced, and but he is still a very, very fast driver. But do you think that could hurt him a little bit? Well, I think uh, he's made a, a, a classic mistake uh, coming in too hot, uh, trying to get onto the oval, and he's lost a heck of a lot of position. So he's got to make up a lot of time now. As we see just in front of him, uh, we have Ed Voras and um, uh, who's that? That's Stefan Morien. They are fighting for position. There, Marco Mogren in there. Stefan Morien going into turn two there just ahead of uh, Marco Mogren. Uh, this is going to be a fascinating battle just behind the leaders, Samuel, as you, uh, we see that the leaders are already uh, coming out of turn three. So I s expect to see a lot of battles, particularly draft battles as well. Back to you, Samuel. Um, Morien must have had a moment because Mogren gets him on the exit there. They'll be side by side entering the oval section and we'll see um, how that goes. They go single file with Mogren in front. Now, uh, remember, this is iRacing, this is virtual internet racing, and uh, in real life you have mechanical failures. On iRacing, as Castro gets loose again, on iRacing you have internet failures. Um, Marco Mogren lost the connection during warm-up and has had internet connections the last couple of weeks, which is very unfortunate because he's a very fast driver, and knocking on wood for him today, hoping that he'll be able to make the end of a race. Currently, it's, it's holding out well for him, Richard. Yeah, and just a, a note here, um, I'm looking at uh, Jeff Jacobs, one of the GS class drivers. I note there, Kevin, that he actually has some damage already to the rear of his car. Yeah, that was from uh, Randall Chenna with Hittenham in the uh, turn one, lap one. But we do have a position change. Uh, Steve Brown got in front of Ray Prado and the hairpin in the infield and uh, is going very, very wide on the last corner trying to get the braking. Just went a little bit too hot. Ray Prado's looking on the inside of him, but I think Steve Brown's going to clear him. Yep, and uh, Prado's going to tuck in. And now he's got the big draft all the way around the track to try and uh, make a move again. Kevin, turn one is a very horrible overtaking opportunity, and uh, as we watch uh, Ray Prater look on the outside of Steve Brown here, and uh, uh, I think we'll see this demonstrated here, that these drivers are thinking twice before they make a move into turn one, because they know uh, the apron of a track is not wide at all, as Ray Prater goes down on the inside of Steve Brown, and they don't want to get too close this early on, and risk having a bad race from this point on. But Ray Prato proves me wrong and looks like he will take the place away. But I'm sure late in the race we're going to see a lot more desperate moves like that into turn one, Kevin. And it's not quite over. Uh, Steve Brown's on the inside through the uh, turn three chicane. And, uh, but Brown's going to be on the outside for the hairpin into four. Prado's got it. But you're right, Samuel. That uh, turn one entrance, it's a curve braking zone. It's very difficult. Looks like Prado and uh, Steve Brown get on the brakes about the same time. Huffman's going to make a move on the inside of Steve Brown. It's getting all. It's all happening right now, as uh, Richard has wanted to say. Yeah, and Guys, if I may uh, interject there, we have a, a fierce battle going on with Castro, Morian, and Marco Mogren. They're coming around the uh, latter part of the oval right now. They come down onto the apron as they have to. They are uh, too wide, certainly, with Mogren and uh, Morien. Mogren shoots ahead and uh, gets the, uh, the the lead into Castro coming at them. Gee, that was close. Um, uh, he thought the better of trying to force that move there. But uh, Morien, Mogro, and Castro, this is a battle that is uh, definitely re uh, worth watching. Um, as we go through this race. I thought Richard was going to take us back to Ed Voras, who had the spin a moment ago, and there's a battle for the GS lead. These drivers are starting to get tired of following each other. Brian's job back to the outside of Patrick. I don't think that's going to work, though, but it certainly shows, uh, it, it's certainly a way of showing Patrick, hey, I'm not going to follow you forever, Kevin. Yeah, I think that was a nice move, just reminding him that he's there, showing his bumper, uh, maybe see if Patrick might make a mistake because it's very easy to run deep into turn one and get all four off in the grass. And uh, and then you spend a long time trying to find the track again. So that was a great uh, uh, att overtaking attempt there by uh, Stradbeck. Even if nothing actually came of it, it's a good idea to remind Gary that he's there and he's willing to take a chance. Yes, and um, I'm sure, Richard, you're still watching this battle between Mogren, Morien, and Castro as Castro and Morien go side by side around the oval portion. 
Yeah, they've got a, a good battle going, but just behind them, I'm trying to give as much uh, airtime to everyone today because there is a, a long race ahead of us. We've got Tom Eckline, and uh, he's in car number 12, uh, a black and white uh, and red car, and he's battling here with Philip Carpenter on the oval. They're approaching the, uh, the final turn before the start-finish line. We have uh, Philip Carpenter already down on the apron. We've got uh, Eckline coming down onto the apron now. And he backs right out of that. Wow. That, and then comes back at him uh, into turn one. So a number of battles. And there Philip Carpenter goes wide onto the grass. So he will lose that place to... Uh, he will certainly lose that place to Tom Eckline easily. So back to the other battles that are taking place. Certainly the big one. And we have is, a crash uh, in turn one. Go we ahead, have a crash go in ahead. turn one. Uh, Ray Prado and Steve Brown ran into each other under braking side by side. It looks like uh, Prado may have gotten a little loose and hit Steve Brown. And uh, both are damaged cars right now. And they were running third and fourth. So Russell Clayson is now moved up into third. No caution. Steve Brown still trying to get around the track, but his car looks wrecked. I can't even see Ray Prey. Oh, there he is, and he just got into another collision there with German the Fanador. Able to hold on to it, though, Kevin. Uh, yeah, I did see the Prado uh, Fanador bit, but uh, it does look like Steve Brown got his right rear damaged. Uh, looks like he's crabbing a little bit. He may be in bad shape, and then I think Prado's just trying to limp around a little bit and just kind of got in the way of a Fanador, maybe. Not real sure what happened there. That one's a little weird to me. Yeah, I think Ray just didn't know he was down his inside. We'll wait and see if Ray Prado continues on the circuit. Meanwhile, Dexter Castro has made a couple moves in ST class. He's in front of Marco Mogren, but really the focus of attention right now is uh, waiting to see if these uh, GS cars continue or if they come down the pits. I think Ray Prado may stay out, Kevin. His car seems to look okay. Yeah, he, I think, got a little bit lucky with those contacts, uh, one on the left side and one on the right side. Looks like he kind of uh, door-punched both cars um, or had both cars door-punch him, whichever way you want to uh, think about it. So I think he's lucky, but Steve Brown definitely isn't. Um, he's got suspension damage. His day is probably over. Yeah, well, it certainly looks like he's bringing it down to pit road. Meanwhile, I'm watching the front of the ST field, Richard. The top three cars, Carl Williamson, James Stevenson, and Stefan Overgaard, have all closed in on each other. That is correct. I was waiting for you to cross to me. I was going to talk about that. So we still have Carl Williamson leading. James Stevenson seems to me uh, not to be struggling to keep up with him. The, the draft will take care of that. And uh, we did have Stefan Overgaard, who we haven't mentioned in the broadcast yet. Uh, catching the two of them, uh, but they seem to be fairly cautious. These are wise heads. Uh, they've been uh, many a race. They know exactly what to do and when to do it. Well, all of these three, so I don't expect them to uh, have any accidents with each other or to make any silly moves, uh, Samuel. And Samuel, Richard, there was almost an incident where uh, Patrick Beard almost got into the back of the lap car of uh, Philip Carpenter. Uh, Carpenter's trying to pull wide on this run from uh, turns three to four and uh, nearly took Beary into the grass with him. Uh, so that was a close instance right there of uh, uh, lap traffic coming into play. Yeah, I was going to say, um, it, it, it took about a whole minute before Carl Williamson and co actually went by Steve Brown in the pits. He, GS cars really are pulling on faster lap times than the ST cars. One thing I noticed in uh, GS, Kevin, Ray Prey, though, got loose uh, heading onto the bank in this lap time round. Lost a couple positions, so the handling on his car isn't perfect. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think you're right there, Samuel. He's trying to uh, get it, and he almost spun it again coming on to, back onto the banking. He's having a, a, a tough day so far. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, the ST leaders coming back onto the bank in this time around. Uh, Richard, do you think James Stevenson's going to make a move eventually? Oh, we have a caution. a caution. We have a caution, I believe. We do indeed, and I have no idea who it's for. Uh, it's Han Han Tao. Han Han to Tao is in the pits. I don't know if he's the one who brought out the caution. It, it looks like he was stopped on track after a collision with David Wammond in the first turn. Wammond got loose center in the first corner. Han Han Tao ran into the back of him. And that collision has brought out the uh, first caution of the day. 
and yeah, you know the uh, right there on the exit of turn one so that and that with a lot of cars coming out so i think that was a smart yellow flag up there to say hey everybody needs to slow down because uh, otherwise you're going to run into a car meanwhile steve brown is back onto the track he is a one lap down but he may be able to get that back we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back after the pit stops back in time for our next for our first restart of the day And we clicked our heels three times and we're back in Kansas here under our first caution of the day. Most of the GS field stayed out under this caution, but um, Richard, there were a couple of ST cars came down pit road. Absolutely. We saw Carl Williamson, uh, who was leading the ST field, come down into the pits and just take fuel. So is this a strategy move on his part uh, to just fuel up while he's got the opportunity? Um, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see how it pans out because now it does put him to the rear of the field behind a bunch of slower drivers. He will have to work his way through them and that's pretty risky. 
We also saw, saw Dexter Castro come into the pits um, and do the same sort of thing. So, interesting moves there, Samuel. Yes, and it seems that Kevin isn't as much of a fan of a Wizard of Oz. However, something Kevin's also not a fan of is this racetrack. And let, let's uh, show you why. We're uh, about to bring up a GSRC lap guide here of a road course at Kansas Speedway. All right, let's take a lap around the Kansas road course with Kevin Brown behind the wheel of the GSRC Mustang. Coming across the start finish line here, you want to get down to the apron because you're not going to be allowed to brake on that banked portion. Now it's going to be heavy braking for turn one and there's not going to be much grip. You'll see Kevin slide around a bit here. That's the way it is around this whole track. Get back to the left side and then just a little bit of a lift for this right hander and back on the power and get to the left as far as you can. Don't dip a wheel in the grass. Once again, very little grip. You see him sliding around. It's going to be tricky around there. And then you got heavy braking for this hairpin. This is going to be a great passing opportunity for guys, especially if they didn't get a good enough exit, had to lift on that previous left-hander. And speaking of which, you want to get as good of an exit out of this one as you can as well, because you don't want to be going too wide through this right-hander coming up here. It's going to be flat out once again. And then you have this extremely difficult braking zone curved braking zone into yet another hairpin and then on top of that it dumps you back onto the oval so once again it's incredibly important to get as good of an exit as you can can't go up into that banking yet you'll see kevin wait for that dotted line that's where he allowed to finally switch up to there as he does so now and then obviously from here you just have your foot to the floor all the way to the start finish line now this track has been much maligned it's not very popular among drivers it's a relatively simple layout and obviously it doesn't have a lot of history to it yet but from my time doing laps i think it's going to put on some great racing it's a very interesting challenge but that's a lap around the kansas road course And the lights are off on the pace car, and you see they're about to come back out onto the banking section here. So let's take a quick look at the rundown as they come to restart. We've got Patrick Beery leading the GS field with Brian Strobeck, Russell Clayson, Elliot Huffman, and Jeremy Fanador rounding out the top five. In ST field, we will have James Stevenson, Stefan Overgaard, Matthew Reinhold, William Randleman, and Marco Mulgren, the top five in ST when they come to the start. Um, judging by the kind of racing you've seen here early on, Kevin, what do you expect in this next stint of a race? I think a little bit more of the same. Some uh, close draft battles, some guys trying to uh, stay hot on the heels of anybody else uh, with them. Uh, but uh, one guy to keep an eye out on right now, I think, is Russell Clayson. He is sitting in third behind Patrick Bierry and Brian Strodwick. And we know that Russell is good under brakes. And with the tough and hard braking zones at this track, he, you can be certain that he's going to be trying to take advantage of that ability and try and move forward. So uh, I think we will see some action towards the front of the GS field here very quickly single file restarts as opposed to the double file start of a race when the green flag comes out the race is on by the way carl williamson only lost six positions with his pit stop and look at russell clayson laying back from brian strobeck he's going to try and get a run on brian as the green flag comes out here but patrick beery keeping the pace and the green flag is now out and it's a bad restart by Russell. He's going to be far back from the top two. Maybe he's expecting Brian to attempt to make a move on Patrick heading into the first turn. And he's trying to give him room just in case there's an incident. Brian is indeed looking to the outside of Patrick. He'll have the inside. No, he won't. He falls back. So Patrick escapes away. Richard, tell us what's going on in ST. Well, in ST, uh, James Stevenson led them off. I was watching very closely Carl and Williamson. And there's a crash. the uh, league owner, spun into the inside. Go ahead, Richard. Yes, uh, uh, not surprising. We had, um, uh, uh, not surprising for Carl Williamson. He went straight down onto the apron, and immediately overtook a whole bunch of cars, and he's now in fourth place already, just behind Matthew Reinald. I've got to be careful, Matthew Reinald and Tom Eckline have exactly the same paint scheme, they must be teammates. But uh, Carl Williamson already into fourth place after the restart, so hasn't hurt him at all. He's not that far behind Stefan Overgaard and James Stevenson, uh, Samuel. Almost an incident between the top two GS leaders as they entered the bank in uh, Kevin. These are two, Brian and Patrick, really 
All of that. Brian's going for it. Yeah, I wonder if uh, Brian was thinking that maybe he's a little bit stronger on the restarts than uh, Patrick and uh, wanted to make a move there. But uh, Patrick definitely got a better run under the banking and, uh, and that big draft has really allowed Brian Strzok to catch right back up as they approach the tri -oval. This may be a perfect run for Brian here to uh, make a move under braking, but no, he's going to break a little bit early and uh, stay in second place this time around. Well, not too surprising, there's still an hour uh, left in the race, and we saw what happened in the battle for third between Steve Brown and Ray Prey, though, earlier. You don't really want to have a race like Steve Brown's having by making a mistake like that early on. James Stevenson leading Stefan Overgaard as the ST leaders coming to turn one, but no change for position yet up front in the ST field, Richard. That's right. Matthew Reinald is now our third place as and we Tom see him Eckline under attack. Go ahead. Tom Eckline spun and an amazing job by Philip Carpenter, Ed Ferres and David Wamond to avoid hitting him. Tom Eckline falls to the back and that's uh, two ST spinners we've seen in two, turn one since the restart, but no caution. Go ahead, Richard. Well, uh, keep your eyes firmly on Carl Williamson. He's now just overtaken Matthew Reinald into turn three and coming out of uh, four, I guess. And he's got his sights already now on uh, Stefan Overgaard. So um, he's uh, made big moves since he uh, restarted. Um, I think that this early pit stop of his is going to be one of the best things he's done. Uh, uh, sorry, Samuel. It was a bit of a risk, but it's paid off for him so far. He got by all the ST carnage and is back up to where he left in third position now. Let's um, let's emphasize that he didn't take tires. There's really no fall off, at least in Carl's opinion, on the ST cars as we go on board with Matthew Rhino here. However, he did take fuel and that could certainly play to a strategic advantage later in the race. Absolutely. And uh, the fact being, uh, just to elaborate a little on the tire fall off with this new tire model, um, as we see a move, who was that that made a move? Let's see. That was Marco Mogren, made a big move on Matthew Reinald into turn one and uh, took the position and is now in fourth place. So let's see what uh, Marco Mogren can do. He's now behind uh, Carl Williamson and uh, fourth place, nothing to sneeze at. But getting back to the other conversation, uh, Samuel, the tires were under the tire model version five they are reacting just like you would expect from normal uh, tires on a on a car in real life so they take a little time to warm up two or three laps in fact to warm up and that is the big reason why you will see guys not taking tires because they worried that uh, the tires will be very slippery in the first couple of laps and they lose a lot of time once again, the GS leaders close up, but it looks like Brian's just happy to sit behind Patrick for now because he doesn't make a move. Russell Clayson, German Fanador, and Elliot Huffman all still in tow. Meanwhile, a three-way battle for seventh, and there's contact between Ray Prado and Randall Kenworth, who was able to hold on to that, Kevin. Yeah, I didn't quite see that. I was watching uh, Strodbeck and, uh, and Bieri, but... Uh... Yeah, it looks like Prado is just, he's been very fast, but he's been struggling under braking a little bit. He kind of came down on uh, on Chenoweth there, I think. He probably could have uh, maybe uh, backed off a little bit and allowed everybody to get through there. So I'm glad there wasn't too much uh, damage. Yeah, and uh, besides that, a lot of single fire racing. Richard, you were about saying something? Yeah, there's a couple of battles going on in the ST class. We've got Stefan Morien and Dexter Castro going at it. And just ahead of them, we have uh, William Randleman and Matthew Reinald. So these guys were side by side a few seconds ago. Um, so this is where we're gonna see some action, no doubt. The guys up front are single file at this point in time and uh, pretty respectful of each other. But if anything, I expect some fireworks uh, at this part of the field here. So we've got Stefan Mori and Dexter Castro, William Ryan, uh, Randleman, and Matthew Rhino expect the fireworks to come from these four guys. Matthew Rhino, Richard, seems to have been sliding back a bit the last few laps. He restarted up front and now he's fallen back a little bit, I believe, to about uh, fifth place in the ST class. And he's got a three-car trolley train right behind him. Yeah, he's dropped off a lot from Marco Mogren. 
uh, doesn't seem to be any problem with his car or anything. Uh, just uh, perhaps a little, uh, you know, whoopsies that he's made here and there. But he is being under threat now from uh, from Randleman and uh, Castro. Look at Castro. We Castro have contact for the lead. Right. Contact for the lead. I'm sorry to sit, jump in. Brian Strybeck uh, made a move on Bieri in the hairpin and uh, got in there a little bit, tapped Bieri. It looks like Strybeck is in the lead overall right now. Uh, well, no, they're side by side through this curved uh, braking zone for turn five. Bieri's on the inside. He's not giving Strybeck a lot of room. Uh, Bieri's going to stay to the inside. Strybeck goes deep. Clayson, Clayson's looking for the over-under, but there goes his teammate, German Afanador, also looking under. But now it looks like Clayson's got a better exit onto the banking. He's got the inside on Strodbeck and it uh, looks like he's going to take over second position. And while all that was happening, the four cars I was talking to you about, they virtually went three wide into turn one and they've got a slower car of West Eric in front of them. They've all managed to pass him safely, but that was pretty hairy stuff. And we see Castro trying to make a move on Randleman there. Uh, didn't come off. Uh, Randleman uh, just a little uh, uh, too wily out of the exit there. But uh, I tell you, this is where the action is going to be. And I expect if one of them makes a mistake, we are going to have a horrible crash here. And Strodbeck's making a move back into uh, turn one under uh, Russell Clayson. He did a fantastic job kind of doing an over-under on the banking. And uh, that has allowed him to take that second place back. Yeah, meanwhile, there's been some kind of collision between Chenworth and Prado, it looks like. Prado actually coming down pit road with a lot of damage. So it was all single file, but the drivers finally got tired. And, uh, it, you know, um, the top five GS cars, Kevin, have really been closing in on each other. Do you think Brian just thought, hey, it's time, I gotta go if I want to uh, win this race? You may very well be right, Samuel. Um, he was definitely watching uh, Russell Clayson close slowly but steadily up on him. And I think that he just felt it was time to make a move. And it uh, looks like Bieri's getting a little aggressive, maybe a little tough under braking as he went very deep into the braking zone for turn five. And that allowed Strodbeck to catch right back up to him into the draft again. So Strodbeck may even think about making another move this time around. And guys, we have lost Marco Mogren. Marco did not have an accident to my knowledge. I think he has lost connection. Uh, this is virtual racing, dependent on the internet. I think we've just lost Marco due to an internet connection problem. And Matthew Rhino must be listening to us because he has worked his way back up into fourth place in this little S key battle we have going on with Castro, Randleman and Morian. So, uh, There's a battle for the lead into turn yes, one. Strodbeck's on the inside into turn one, and Barry's going to stay wide, and it looks like Strodbeck's definitely got this. Uh, he gets the braking done. He's on the line. Well done. Strodbeck takes over the overall lead. And now Clayson is right on Barry. So, and uh, the battle for fourth, uh, Vanador holding off Huffman there, but Barry's got to be careful. He doesn't want to lose too many spots, but I, I don't think he'll have uh, much of a choice here, Kevin, unless he decides to make a move on Brian when they get back onto the banking. Yeah, I think everybody's best hope right now is just to attack the car in front of you and, and hope you can uh, uh, hang on. So uh, Clayson definitely is going to be very strong under braking for turn one this time around, as long as he can get a good exit under the hairpin. So Barry might be shaking a little bit as Barry gets loose under braking, and that's going to allow Clayson to close right up, but Barry gets a good launch in the middle part of the corner. So that was some excellent car control from Patrick Barry right there. And guys, I believe, uh, if I can just jump in here quickly, there's been a lead change in ST. Your, uh, the current leader is now Stefan Overgaard, but I think that that was with a bit of help from Stevenson into Turn 1. I think these two being teammates are working together to fend off Carl Williamson, who's now looking uh, right onto the uh, rear bumper of James Stevenson. He's going to touch him. He just, just gave him a little kiss. No harm done there, certainly uh, won't do any damage to either car. Uh, and uh, that's the current situation in the top three holding station, but with the lead change, the battle still is the four cars behind them, starting with Castro, who has now got past uh, Matthew Reinal and is sitting in the fourth place. Back to you, Samuel. Yeah, I'm watching the front of the uh, GS field, as I'm sure Kevin is. Uh, they were able to stay single file entering turn one because Brian got draft off a lap car. Tom Eckline, though, making uh, in the ST car, making life hard for Elliot Huffman, who lost a bit of time on Dram and the Fanador there for fourth place, Kevin. 
Yeah, well, there's not too much uh, that Tom Eklund can do. This is a, a short infield with a couple of difficult corners for uh, for lap traffic right there, and uh, it's just kind of a bad spot for Elliot Huffman. It's just a uh, short straw sometimes. Yeah, meanwhile, this uh, battle for the uh, front at ST continues as Richard has been keeping you updated with Stefan Overgaard in front of James Stevenson, who remains in place. We can confirm for you now that Marco Mogren did lose the connection. He has got it back. He's sitting on pit road currently. Yeah, and that is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that Marco was uh, really having a great race up to that time. And I expected him to uh, stick to that fourth place at least. Uh, but anyway, the battle up front here, uh, Carl Williamson holding station in third place. Unusual for him uh, not to be attacking more vigorously, but he is behind one of the fastest guys in a um, MX in an MX-5 being James Stevenson. James is kind of holding him off. I I'm just wondering here, Samuel, uh, is this tactics? Um, teammates working together to uh, defeat an opponent i just wonder very possible but they're gonna have to keep it up for a long time because there's 55 minutes of this race left i've got to be honest i'm actually watching the battle for the gs lead right now although they have remained single file working their way through st traffic but as we ride on board carl williamson right now you can see the st field getting strung out as they go around the oval track but 55 minutes to go, it's going to keep getting low and low, and those gaps are going to keep getting close and closer. We have a three wide for the GS battle there, Samuel. Yes, and they're going through a bunch of lap traffic. It's a maze right here. Look at Russell Clayson. Has to go to the right to get by Philip Carpenter. That was three wide, two rows deep, and the GS field have got through it so far. Now Dram and the Fanador and Elliot Huffman having to go round and Philip Carpenter racing side by side with Wes, Wes Eric. Dram and the Fanador is out of it. Now it's Elliot Huffman who's got to find a way by these cars before they get into turn one, Kevin. Yeah, that was a, a little bit aggressive. I was watching that and that was kind of all set up uh, through the infield where uh, the GS cars were kind of up, coming up on the ST and uh, Brian Strodbeck decided that he absolutely wanted to get through before uh, they got through to the banking again. And uh, that was just not really the most conducive thing to uh, no incidents as it did look like Strodbeck got into the back of Wes Eric and, and rearranged his rear bumper. But fortunately, everybody's still running in this race right now. Well, Wes Eric also had some damage to begin with. Um, meanwhile, there's also a battle, a uh, four-way battle going on for fourth place in the ST field. So there's battles all over the place, and every time we think it calms down, it picks back up again, Richard. Yep, that's exactly right. I've checked in with the top three. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, Carl Williamson uh, still holding station in third place. I expect some sort of move from him down the track. Bearing in mind, as you mentioned, that uh, the race is not, uh, 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 I mean, there's still a very long way to go. But, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, we have Stefan Morian, Dexter Castro, and Matthew Reinl. That's the next three. Uh, Matthew Reinl looking like he wants to make a move on Dexter Castro at this point in time. He's right on top of him. They've got to come down onto the apron now. He goes to the outside, so there'll be two wide coming into turn one. This could be interesting, Samuel. Let's see what happens here. No, he backs out. Very wise as we see Dexter Castro just get a little squirrely coming into one. And uh, Matthew Reinald senses this might be an opportunity, but then breaks early because, of course, he doesn't want to have a problem. Meanwhile, we have Stefan Morien closing up once again. And so the battle uh, is on again through the infield. And the exciting times are going to be when these uh, GS cars all catch them down. And that, that big ST battle we were watching earlier, the 6th and 7th place GS cars of James Brown and Jeff Jacobs are now work navigating their way through that. And so I'm keeping an eye on them, waiting to see if there's any collisions. Because like you say, Kevin, there's a, it's not the easiest infield for these guys to be racing side by side through. 
Yeah, and you wouldn't necessarily think it, but it turns out that especially the uh, the run between the turn four hairpin and the turn five hairpin that leads you back onto the banking, that uh, big long curve. If you're on the uh, to driver's left, and uh, you know trying to go too wide, it's really difficult to try and actually make something uh, work there. It turns out there's not a lot of grip there, and uh, I'm looking at Russell Clayson got a really bad exit onto the banking, and actually Patrick Bieri is applying his brakes on the banking while he's in the draft of Brian Strodbeck. So right now, he's very interested in staying behind Strodbeck. He does not want to make the move. So there's some strategy going on here, and I'm curious to see how Barry's going to make this play out. Well, the battle that Richard has been talking about, Dexter Castro, Matthew Reinald, Stefan Morian, and William Randleman are going into turn one now. And before the end of his lap, Kevin, the GS leaders will be going by them. Yeah, they're gonna look. They're looking like they're gonna uh, get to him in that trouble zone between turn four and five once again. And uh, Bieri's looking very racy through this chicane, uh, but Strodbeck's very wide. It looks like Strodbeck may actually even go defensive. No, Bieri's gonna poke his nose a little bit, and uh, no, he's gonna pull back inside. So these guys and Russell Clayson actually oh, gets in the back of Patrick Bieri right there in the airpin. Russell Clayson hit him with the late braking. Uh, 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 Patrick Bieri was breaking so that he couldn't get into Brian Strodbeck. Here They're they coming go. through the left traffic, all happening. Here they go. Matthew Rhino got loose out of a turn four hairpin. A couple of cars made a move on him. Brian Strodbeck stays in line. Patrick Bieri, kind enough to Brian, to stay in line too. Rhino and Strodbeck get close on exit there. Now it should be the easy part, and I say should as these uh, lead, uh, lead GS cars navigate their way through this ST battle. And they have to, <laughs> they have to go to the inside and the outside of some of them, so the battle is on. And Russell Clayson, the front of his Mustang, Kevin, looks trash. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty bad. You know, that's some significantly heavy damage to the front end of his car. We just have to wait to see just how much that's actually going to affect him on the uh, front street. And off goes Overguard in the battle for the ST lead. Carl Williamson's going to take it from him. Carl, they've gone by James. Stefan Overguard overshot turn one. And into the lead goes Carl Williamson of the ST race. Sorry, Kevin. No, that's quite all right. Uh, Richard, what are you seeing there? Well, uh, yes, we, uh, we saw uh, Overguard getting a bit loose there. He's still a bit loose, um, and he's lost the lead. Um, they both uh, teammates have lost the lead to Carl Williamson, who is back in first place. So um, it's still early days. Um, Stefan did not lose it completely. He's still in a handy third place behind James Stevenson. So not too much damage done, just a couple of places lost. And guys, it looks like Patrick Berry got a slowdown penalty uh, on the outside or through the middle of the uh, uh, turn two, turn three chicane. And he's had to uh, surrender second place and quite a bit more tracks position. Uh, so that's very unfortunate for Patrick. A couple green flag pit stops going on here, guys. Jeff Jacobs and Stefan Morian down pit road. Is it, is it really that time? I, I guess they're counting on the race going caution free or something, maybe making it to the end with a stop. Wow, 24 laps in, how, many, how much time remaining? Around about 47 minutes. So, yeah, good time for a pit stop. Yeah, yeah we are Pat right in the middle Patrick's of Patrick's in. Patrick Beery is into the pits, Kevin. Well, we're right in the middle of uh, the normal pit stop window, so I guess these guys are running out of fuel and stopping now. Um, you know, we're so used to them uh, only stopping under yellow that we're a little surprised, I think. <laughs> That's right, um, but you know, I thought there'd be a lot more cautions. We've only had that one caution. Great driving from all the drivers, but then again, this is an easy track, Kevin. I mean, this if you if you can't stay out of trouble on this track, where can you stay out of trouble? Well, that's a very good philosophical question, as it looks like uh, Strodbeck is uh, making a move on the ST overall leader of Carl Williamson. So uh, leader versus leader right there, and Strodbeck obviously is easy, easily able to drive right away from him. I yes. Think, Go I was going to say, yeah. I think Russell Clayson is going to get out of his car, uh, out of his car at the end of a race, and say, "Did I really have that much damage?" Because he's holding on to drop back pretty well. I mean, true, he's dropped back a bit, Kevin, but I think that's mainly a product of the lap traffic. 
Yeah, I think you're right. You know, I've been trying to keep an eye on their top speeds on the banking, and there's not that much of a difference right now. It looks like it's uh, maybe about two mile, uh, excuse me, two kilometers an hour, maybe three kilometers an hour, which really isn't a whole lot, but it may be enough for uh, uh, to keep uh, Russell Clayson behind Brian Stradbeck for the rest of this race without something uh, uh, to help out Russell. And into the pits comes our very own pit reporter, Stefan Overgaard, so he should know what it's all about in that blue and white car while he's running up front in the ST field. He'll come in, probably take no tyres, come back out. And, you know, if a caution doesn't come out, they should all rejoin in the order they were in. If a caution does come out and they're able to stay on the lead lap, they'll be able to just catch up with the pace car and take a lead when the rest of the lead does pit, Richard. Yeah, but uh, you... you wrong on uh, the tires. Stefan Overgaard took two right tires. He's taking two left ones as we speak. So he's going the full. And you know, you're thinking about it. Uh, why not? You might as well freshen up your tires. There's not a lot to be lost. Everyone else has also got to pit. So if you're pitting in the normal pit window, that might be a wise strategy because that could pay dividends for you towards the back end of the race, uh, uh, Samuel. A 31 second pit stop for Stefan though, that's uh, quite long, so we will have to see how it plays out. Of course, if, uh, if a caution comes out, the timing doesn't really matter a whole lot. Watching our leaders come around the oval portion of the racetrack now. And uh, Kevin, throughout all these pit stops, our um, new podium sitter, German Afanador, running a nice race in third place. Yeah, absolutely. You said he's running a nice, clean race. He's in third place. Uh, he hasn't seen a whole lot of action um, most of this race, but I think he's probably okay with that. So, uh, But he hasn't seemed to be quite as fast as his teammate, Russell Clayson, and it does sound like one of our STE leaders is pitting, Samuel. Yes, yeah, it's uh, James Stevenson. He's coming into the pits right now as we speak. Uh, the interesting thing for me about all of this, I want to see whether he takes any tires. I expect that he will, being in the normal pit window. If that was out of sequence, then I wouldn't have thought he would take any tires. But the real interesting thing is uh, we had Carl Williamson pitting earlier. Now, I'm pretty sure he has to pit again because that was way too early for a pit stop. Uh, I'm not sure what you're thinking there, Samuel, but I'm pretty sure that uh, we will have another pit stop from Carl Williamson. If he can make it to the end, he should stay out. But if he can't, I would say pit now because the last thing he wants to have happen is everyone pits, a caution comes out, he can't make it to the end, so he has to pit. And then all of a sudden, he has to restart at the tail end of the ST field again, Richard. That's right. Uh, the other thing to consider is that his tyres, these tyres do go off towards the end of a long stint now. I have not done a 90-minute race with uh, with the MX-5, but I'm pretty sure that by the end of 45 minutes, these tires will have gone off if they kind of follow the trend of real-life tires. So the guys who are taking tires now in a normal green flag pit stop, I think are doing the wise thing, and I, I suspect that Carl Williamson did not take tires when he did pit. So if he's trying to go to the end, his tyres will be absolute rubbish by the end of this race, Samuel. And Richard, uh, our uh, second place and third place GS drivers, Russell Clayson and German Fanador, are both in pit lanes, both getting tyres right now. And the way you tell the difference is that uh, Clayson has more purple on his car, a purple lid on the top of that Mustang, and a Fanador has a grey one. It's not often we get to see their cars together stationary like that. So we might as well point that out while we have the opportunity, Kevin. And uh, I do want to uh, point out my favorite uh, V Apex paint scheme is uh, Chris Burt, who's not here. Uh, when he switched to V Apex, he dropped his all black and white Canadian maple leaf paint scheme to a VX paint scheme with a big, huge maple leaf on the roof. And uh, that one's super easy for me to spot. So it's my favorite V Apex paint. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, look, uh Carl Williamson currently leading the ST class, obviously, because he's not been into the pits. Dexter Castro has inherited the second place with William Randleman, still in a battle here with Carpenter. Or is he in a battle? No, he's not in a battle with Carpenter, even though Carpenter has overtaken him. Uh, William Randleman is definitely in third place, and Carpenter probably a lap or so down. In fact, he's two laps down. Now, uh, we shall need to wait until the pit stop shake out to see exactly what is happening, Samuel. 
so if there are any battles that are happening at this point in time now is a good time to do that or in fact maybe even take a break up to you well i want to point out one small battle that just went on by those two cars randleman and uh, uh the other one you were talking about Patrick Beery and Russell Clayson are right together as they were before the stops. It looked like Clayson was actually a bit closer, Kevin, but then um, but then fell back a little bit as they were going by those lap test T cars. Yeah, it looks like he dropped a uh, wheel under braking for uh, turn five and uh, just kind of went deep into the corner. Pretty easy to do, but uh, that big strong draft kind of helped him uh, back catch back up. So I think for Russell Clayson, this could not have gone any better, this pit cycle sequence, because that's allowed him to hook up with Patrick Bieri, get in his draft, and I think that's going to serve uh, uh, Russell really well right now. 41 minutes left to go. Your current leader is Brian Strobeck, still yet to pit. Your current ST leader is Carl Williamson, still yet to pit. We'll be back for all the action here on the Global Sim Racing Channel.
Welcome back to uh, Kansas Road Course here, where all, the, most of the GS leaders have pit, and Bat Patrick has rejoined as a leader. Brian in second, and Russell just able to hang on to third there, Kevin, after getting loose out of turn four. Yeah, he, uh, Russell Clayson actually had to uh, check up to allow Brian Strydebeck to uh, rejoin as uh, Patrick Berry goes all the way to the wall trying to avoid those ST cars. It looked like he almost hit the wall, actually. He got so close there for a bit. But uh, Russell Clayson has dropped back behind, and with that damage on the front of his car, that is not what he wanted. He wanted to stay in the draft of these guys to have a chance, and uh, now he is way too far back on the draft, so he needs a little bit of help right now to catch back up as Strydebeck is all over Berry. He's on the inside on the apron. Yep, and it looks like we're going to have a lead change going into turn one here, Brian, as they go by the uh, William Randleman coming out of pit road, sees the two leaders running too wide by him. Brian Strobeck is back into the lead here at Kansas Road. Meanwhile, your ST leaders, Carl Williamson, Richard, still has not came down into the pits. Yeah, well, he should be able to go um, quite a distance more before he has to pit. As we see uh, Russell Clayson now going by the ST leader who is going by William Randleman. Um, Carl Williamson leading uh, easily at this point in time. Second place is being held down by Dexter Castro uh, at this point in time. William Randleman is actually in third place. Um, he was just passed by Carl Williamson, so that should put him another lap down. James Stevenson and Stefan Overgaard um, are the actual uh, I would say third and fourth place at this point in time, um, um, Samuel. Why am yeah. I forgetting your name all the time? I, I don't know. My parents were going to call me Matthew. Uh, yeah, Dexter Castro running in second place. It's saying on my screen that he's had two pit stops. I believe the first one was his regular pit stop under caution, and the second one was to top up with fuel. And we really don't know, unfortunately, guys. It seems um, if they can make it to the end, I think they would need an extra caution or two. Yeah, I would say so. But um, we still have teammates um, James Stevenson and Stefan Overgaard following each other with uh, Stevenson in the lead of Overgaard. Uh, let's see if these two guys over time can catch up with Dexter Castro. I imagine they would be able to with Dexter Castro making the odd mistake, uh, particularly coming out of the uh, infield onto the oval. We've seen him have a few bubbles there, so um, we'll see how things pan out. But at the moment, quite strong out, Samuel. Yeah, it is around the whole track. Uh, 14 seconds is the gap that Dexter Castro has in front of Trane Stevenson. Actually, I believe that's down to 13 seconds now. Actually, correct me on that. I believe it's 34 seconds. Um, yeah, meanwhile, I'm watching also Brian and Patrick quite close up front in the GS field. Third, fourth, and fifth are Russell Clayson, Steve Brown, and Elliot Huffman. Really, it's been a kind of a calm race in the GS field so far, Kevin. Well, I think it's been calm on the outside, but all furious on the inside. I've seen these guys uh, making a lot of little mistakes here and there, struggling a little bit with grip sometimes, especially at the end of the last stints. Uh, looks like they had baked off their tires front and rear. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're not seeing a lot of action, but the guys are pushing hard. Uh, Patrick Berry last time around on the uh, in the draft was uh, actually using the using the brakes to stay behind Strodbeck. And, um, you know, he's doing it again. He's just trying to make sure he's behind him. And stay in the draft so uh, you know I get yeah calm on the outside but furious on the inside definitely do you think uh, GS field could come down to a last lap last corner pass Kevin uh, very co easily could be and you know maybe these guys are, are trying to set that up see uh, how they feel about their relative strengths in the draft and maybe being able to make that happen but uh, right now you know between Beery and Strodbeck I couldn't tell you who's got the advantage right now it seems like Whichever guy is trailing definitely seems to be the faster car. How about guys, the we, we have a little battle developing in the ST class, and it is between Ed Voress in the blue and white car and the number 34 car of Philip Carpenter as he now uh, gets up to the rear of Ed Voress. Let's see what they do here going into turn one. We see Philip going to the inside. We see Ed Barras breaking a little early by the looks of it. But then Philip Carpenter breaks uh, hard to not uh, try and do anything into turn one. So 
They hold station going into the infield once again, but certainly he's been getting closer and closer to Ed Voraz. Um, and this is about the only battle that I can see at the moment in ST. Yeah, it's about a battle for eighth place there in the ST field right now. As they, I'm watching David Wammond, he just ran about off the track, but able to recover from that. And uh, honestly, uh, kind of small fields in the GS and ST fields for today. But, uh, I, I mean, it's still providing some exciting racing. And most of the cars are still in the race. So hopefully we'll see exciting racing from now until the end. Yeah, and Voraz just went uh, fairly wide there coming onto the oval. And I thought that uh, Philip Carpenter might have taken advantage of that, but he did not. Um, so now that they're on the oval, the draft will kick in and we'll see what happens uh, if Philip will be brave enough to take on Ed Varas as they get into turn one uh, once again, although he's dropped back a little bit, but the draft should pull him in right about now. Uh, let's see. No, I think he's too far away. He doesn't have a chance of making any kind of a move. So back to you, Samuel. Yes, there's also been a small battle going on um, for fifth place in the ST class between Stefan Morien and Matthew Rhino. I've got to confess, Richard, I really haven't been paying a whole lot of attention to Stefan Morien today, but there he is, fifth place. He's really worked his way up. Absolutely. Stefan Morien is one of those drivers who he seems to be under the radar a little bit. Matthew Rhino making up time on him as we speak now uh, at the Oval. Let's see if Matthew Reinald will make a move into turn one. They've got to go down to the apron just about now. Matthew Reinald goes on the outside of Stefan. Stefan having the inside line will have a better line into the... Ah, uh, he breaks early. People are very wary going into turn one here, uh, Samuel. But then, breaking early would have worked for him. But then he's got to cut the corner a little bit. So Matthew Reinald actually takes that position away from Stefan Morien, Samuel. Yes, he does. Uh, meanwhile, uh, there may be a small battle brewing between Stevenson and Overgaard soon because Ray Prato was working his way through them and they got a little bit close there for a little while, but actually they've split up a little bit. We still see uh, times where your heart skips a beat when these GS drivers come up to lap these ST cars. We've uh, talked about why that's been difficult um, a lot today. But it seems like no harm, no foul, and they'll go about their business, Kevin. Yeah, uh, and we might get a little bit of action this lap. The GS leaders are rapidly closing on, on up on that uh, big pack in the uh, at the front of the ST field. Uh, it looks like they're going to catch them in the infield. So once again, we might see a little bit of fireworks because I see a lot of ST cars going uh, too wide on the approach to turn one. That's got to be scaring Stradbeck and Bieri right now. As sure enough, Stradbeck has to uh, pay attention to David Wyman, who goes very slow on the inside of, uh, of turn one. But he and Bieri are both uh, clean through there as they go through the uh, left, right, left, or right, left, right, whatever it is. The turn two, three car floats. And Tom Eckline is the white and black car they are going round right now. Stefan Overgaard currently sitting in fourth place in the ST field in that blue car as we watch James Stevenson taking a very wide line through turn four in the red and green car. Not sure if that was intentional or not. Ryan gets by Stefan okay, but the, he's going to close in on James here. James gives him the line. But still, what about Patrick? Is Patrick going to be able to clear the rest red Miata in time? No, he's not. But it shouldn't be too hard to get him out of this oval section. Now that Philip Carpenter, Ed Varas battle we were watching there now. They're going to be picks for these GS cars. And Philip Carpenter, Patrick Beery has to go up high onto the banking to get around him. Looks like um, this is a, another a conflict avoided. I don't quite know the right way to put that, Kevin. Yeah, I think that was probably just a safe move from Bieri. He's not quite supposed to uh, rejoin the banking that early. He's supposed to wait until the uh, dash line uh, uh, after the corner completely ends. But I think that was a smart move just to make sure that he gave the ST drivers uh, enough room there and, and didn't run into the back of one of them. And now we see uh, James Stevenson uh, approaching and going past uh, Tom, Philip Carpenter, sorry. Uh, Philip Carpenter offers some resistance, but not really much. And uh, James Stevenson through there. Stefan Overgaard going side by side with Carpenter. 
and has to back out of it completely. Otherwise, that could have been nasty because we saw steaming through uh, Brian Strodbeck, I believe it was. Uh, no, Russell Clayson steaming through as well. So that could have been and quite dangerous for all the drivers. Go ahead. Into the pits comes Carl Williamson. He cannot make it to the end. Now, this is going to be interesting. Carl has not been involved in a lot of racing up there, and he believes in no tyres, but like Richard says, his cars are going to be shot if he gets to the end of his race without changing them. I am curious to see, as if Dexter Castro stays out, this will put him into the lead. Indeed, it will. When Carl comes out, will he be in front or with James Stevenson and Stefan Overgaard? I'm not sure how many tyres he's been taking, Richard. He's taken four tyres, I can tell you. Um, he's filling up with fuel now. He'd, he'd be pretty much close to empty. So now he's, he's pit stop and he's coming out. Let's see where he comes out in relation to the rest of them. Uh, just crossing over the line. He's on the track now. We see one of the GS cars going by. Who is the next best in, uh, in the ST class? Not sure. Dexter Castro is on the infield. So we'll have to wait a lap or so to see what happens. It's Stevenson, Richard, and he's far in front of Stevenson. About 10, yeah, about 10 seconds Carl Williamson has on Stevenson right now. So the top three in the ST class currently is Dexter Castro, Carl Williamson, and James Stevenson. Kevin? Well, I'm keeping a close eye on this lead for the GS uh, battle overall, and uh, Patrick Berry has done a fine job of uh, slowly reeling Brian Stroud back in. But uh, as soon as I started talking, uh, Berry got a little loose in the in the hairpin and, and gave up that harder and half that second gap. And now he's caught behind Carl Williamson as uh, they run onto the last corner. But Berry smartly kind of gives up a little bit, knows that he should be strong under the banking. Uh, although it looks like Stroudbeck may have gotten enough. He's about a second and a half in front, uh, behind Stroudbeck. So this may be a tough ask for Bieri right now. He's got to buckle down and uh, do what he can to catch back up right now. And we had some dramas in uh, coming onto the oval there. We had the uh, the uh, GS car of not sure who that was. Let me see. That was Elliot Huffman uh, trying to get past Ed Barras. He nearly lost it on the entry to the oval. Uh, but he did catch it back up, and we've got Stefan Overgaard got, uh, got some work to do. He's way behind um, James Stevenson now, with a couple of cars in front of him, and uh, a lot of GS cars steaming by. So they're pretty strung out at this point in time. Let's see if they can close up. As we see, the leader is Dexter Castro now. Not sure whether but he has to hit again. Of GS is about to change, maybe because Wes Eric held up Brian Strobeck as they were going through the chicane, just a matter of circumstance. And Patrick Berry is right on his rear bumper, Kevin. Yep, so uh, that uh, that big gap that Strodbeck had managed to get, well, relatively big gap, is now gone within not even a lap. And uh, Beery's right back where he wants to be, right hot on the bumper, Brian Strodbeck. And that's going to allow him yet another chance to uh, to make something happen. Stefan Overgaard just had a big moment, Richard, and that's not his first. I'm wondering if he's struggling on those new tyres. Well, it shouldn't be. He's done enough laps for the tyres to have uh, got some heat into them. I think he's just driving really hard to try and catch back up to uh, James Stevenson. And James Stevenson uh, is trying hard to catch up to Carl Williamson, but uh, at this point in time, Carl's got a handy gap on, uh, on, on Stevenson and uh, let's see if he can catch up to Castro who is going into turn one now. Carl Williamson still on the oval so Carl Williamson's got a bit of work to catch up to Castro but I'm wondering uh, whether Castro has to pit again. I think he does uh, because he pitted under the same caution that um, Carl Williamson did. I think what Castro is trying to do here is take advantage of the fact that he doesn't have any GS or slow S key cars to worry about. He's uh, putting on some uh, nice lap times. He's probably thinking about trying to jump James Stevenson and come out of a pits in a second, I think, Richard. Possible, very possible indeed. Once he goes into the pits, uh, I, I remember now, that's right, he pitted when Stevenson, uh, when uh, Williamson pitted. So. Uh, they are on the same sort of strategy there. Um, so he will definitely lose out going into the pits right now. I don't know whether he will have a short enough pit stop to keep him in the lead. Uh, James Stevenson has got a lot of work to do to try and catch up to Carl Williamson. So um, 
I think that that may be a tall order for him. Stefan Overgaard, who's battling with the uh, minor placings here. He's got a couple of lap cars in front of him. He's got Tom Eckline and Philip Carpenter in front of him. So he's got a lot of work to do just to keep uh, hanging on to that uh, third place when it eventuates. And behind him, we've got Stefan Morien, who's way back as well. So at this point in time, it looks to me predictably that Carl Williamson, if everything else goes to plan, will win this race, uh, Samuel. But a caution could change all that, and we know as we approach the final 20 minutes of the race that so these drivers are going to start being a little bit more aggressive. And if a caution comes out, that could cause a restart, and it won't matter how much of a lead Carl has then, it will be all up for grabs. And I did notice one of those uh, lap cars that we were watching in this ST battle. Oh, well, unfortunately, it sounds like we may have some uh, technical issues with Samuel right now, but I just want to update uh, everybody on the front of the GS field where Patrick Berry uh, kind of lost a little bit of time with Brian Strodbeck. Strodbeck been running very, very quick, but uh, Berry has managed to kind of close that up again. Another half second, he's right up under uh, breaking in the hairpin. And then we have another battle as well. German Afanador has slowly crept in on Elliot Huffman, and he's now sitting only about a second behind him as well. So a little bit of action here is uh, starting to heat up in the GS field in a couple of spots. Richard? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, they, uh, uh, German Afanador just passed Carl Williamson there. Elliot Huffman just up ahead of him. This is where the action is definitely. Uh, but Patrick Bieri and Brian Strodbeck, they are having a ding-dong battle here. At the moment, uh, they're passing, by the looks of it, they're passing Castro on the oval section. Bieri closing right up there at the moment, Kevin. This uh, uh, this has been the situation, though, for the past few laps. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right, Richard. And, and there is a yellow out. James Brown got tagged by I'm not sure who, but it just happened about five seconds ago, and it was an ST car. Tom Eckline just ran into the back of James Brown uh, a bit late on the brake, setting into the hairpin. By the way, guys, I have to apologize for losing the connection, and this changes everything as far as the ST field is concerned, uh, Richard. Absolutely. Now we have a race and bearing in mind there's 20 minutes left, less than 20 minutes, about 17 minutes. So we are in a situation where Dexter Castro now could uh, pit under yellow and get his tires and everything else that he wants to. I'm going to keep an eye on Dexter while you guys are calling some of the other action. But uh, this does indeed change everything. Yeah, this was not good for Dexter, because had he pitted under green, he could have came out in second place and finished second. But now it is under caution, and he may come out at the back of the ST field. We'll have to wait and see where he will be exactly when we come back here to round nine of the Continental Endurance Sports Car Series here on the GSRC.
Hello and welcome back to Candace Speedway once again. You see the lead must stand there. It's a pace car and it has its lights off. That means we are about to go back under green as the field work our way around the oval portion of this track. Only one car came down pit road on, from the lead lap and that was Dexter Castro. He is rejoined in seventh place behind Carl Williamson, James Stevenson, Stefan Overgaard, Stefan Morian, Matthew Reinhold and William Randleman. So it'll be interesting to see where he finishes because he certainly would have finished about second had the race stayed under green. Field entering turn three now. Seven GS cars left on the lead lap. The last time I counted, Brian Strobeck, Patrick Breary, Russell Clayson, Elliot Huffman, German Afanador, Jeff Jacobs, and James Brown. And it could be uh, any of those guys' race, because uh, this could be a bit of a crazy restart heading into turn one, Kevin. Yeah, you said it, Samuel. There's uh, not a lot of race left, maybe about 10 minutes of green flag action uh, left. And so I think, you know, these guys are going to be trying to make their move now as the pace car pulls off, Samuel. And when the green comes out, the cars can go. Will Patrick try and make a move right away? Russell Clayson, we know he's good on the brakes. Green flag is out. Russell does not get a good restart. Elliot Huffman going to look to the outside of him already. I think the top two are going to stay single file, but their place... Not sure I can say the same. Brian leads in, Patrick is second, Elliot Huffman and Russell Clayson side by side for third and fourth, but stay single file excellent. Richard, how does the ST feel, Bo? ST field has taken off with Carl Williamson in front. Carl Williamson took off like the proverbial bat out of hell. And We've around got goes three Castro. wide on Stefan uh, Overgaard going into turn two there. Stefan Morien and Matthew Reinel, they both uh, trumped. Uh, Stefan Overgaard, so he lost two positions right there. James Stevenson um, trying to stay with Carl Williamson, not succeeding at this point in time, but the action is for third place at this point in time. Stefan Morian, brilliant into turn one. They just swamped Stefan Overgaard. Uh, there were three wide for a few seconds there, so um, he's lost out. And let's see what happens as we go into the final minutes of this race, uh, Samuel. Yeah, ST Field making up for the action that GS kind of lacked on that little restart there because uh, uh, um, Dexter Castro, who looked destined for second place finish at the race stay green, got spun in the first turn trying to make a move on the outside. Three wide racing throughout the entire ST Field and eight and a half minutes left to go as Brian Strobeck leads the field around once again. Patrick Beery not close enough to make a move yet, Kevin. Not close enough, maybe too early. Yep, no, Barry's going to stay behind him. There was a, a, a lot of close action as Huffman goes very deep under braking for turn one and uh, manages to gather it back up. I thought he was going to run right back into the back of uh, Russell Clayson, but uh, German Afanador is all over the back of Elliot Huffman trying to make a move uh, anytime he can. And uh, they're definitely all fighting hard right now because they know probably any position you can make right now is going to be your only chance. Stefan Overgaard getting loose out of the first turn there. There still seems to be a lot of pack racing going on in ST, Richard. But Cole and James have seemed to have ran away from the rest of the pack. That's right. And the action is in the middle of the field here with uh, Stefan Overgaard under attack from William Randleman at the moment. So Stefan did not have a good restart and he must be kicking himself for what happened in the very first uh, turn after well the second turn after the restart so he's got a lot of work to do to even uh, get back into third place and we've got Stefan uh, Mori and the opportunist who's got Matthew Reinel in his sights at the moment and we expect him to catch up to up to him during the stint that goes around the oval so let's see what happens here because this is where the big battle is. Up front, James Stevenson trying to make up time on Carl Williamson. He's got the draft at the moment. They will be uh, going down onto the apron in a matter of moments. Uh, oh, James Stevenson. Third and GS, and there's contact between teammates Russell Clayson and German of Fanador. And it's right on the exit of turn one. Are they going to throw the caution? If they do, they may only have a one lap shootout at the end of Kevin. 
Uh, no, it looks like uh, Clayson's underway again, Roland, and uh, so it looks like uh, everybody's going to stay under green. That was a close situation. Uh, Huffman was bump drafting uh, German Afanador on the main straight, and I think Afanador was maybe carrying a little too much speed, more speed than he thought, and just got right into the back of Russell Clayson, his teammate. Unfortunate for those two guys, uh, a well-received boon for Elliot Huffman. Yes, but he's lost contact with the two leaders. Brian Strobeck still leading from Patrick Beery. And there's six minutes left. Maybe only about three or four laps left to go. Richard? Yes, indeed. And the battle for the first place is definitely on. Uh, Carl Williamson is holding out James Stevenson at the moment. But James Stevenson closed up significantly during the uh, the oval section and is right on the back now of Carl Williamson going back onto the oval. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. I'm sure there are other battles going on behind them, but this is the battle for first place as we speak, Samuel. Battles for first place in both divisions. That is what you get with the CESCS. Ryan Strobeck leading Patrick Beery, Carl Williamson leading James Stevenson, and with five and a half minutes left to go, it, 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 someone's got to win it, but I'm not quite sure who it's going to be right now, Kevin. Yeah, you know, I think Patrick Berry, it looks like he's just going to sit in second right now and maybe try and make his move on the last lap. At least that's kind of the vibe I get because he's not looking like he's really trying to press the issue right now. Uh, he seems like he's just content to stay in the draft a little bit. So we've seen that from uh, Berry for a long time now. He's been uh, in, in the uh, draft of Stradbeck just kind of hanging and out. And we have, I have to break right in there. We had uh, for a second there, Williamson went really wide into turn one. And I thought for a moment there that Stevenson would uh, get that position. He's right on the back of Williamson right now. So these guys are going to battle fiercely for that first place. And I, I did think that Stevenson was being a little bit uh, circumspect going into turn one. But then he saw an opportunity and decided to attack. So he's fallen back into line now. But I expect he's sizing up Williamson for one of those uh, last lap attacks as, uh, as we spoke about a few seconds ago in the GS class, Emil. Yeah, Brian Strobeck and Beery closer and closer, and Beery's going to take a look this time, Kevin. He's looking on the outside. Yeah, he called it. Uh, Beery's on the outside through the trioval. It's going to be a tough ask right now. Strobeck's going to have all the advantages as long as he's able to keep uh, breaking under. His, and Beery gets a little loose under the approach, but Strobeck has the apex, has the line, pushes Beery a little bit wide, But and uh, Strobeck's going to have the preferred line through the chicane here. He is going to take it, so Beery's going to have to back off a little bit. But if he can get a good exit, looks like he is, uh, Beery's going to have another chance. As Beery pulls to driver's left, Strobeck's going to take the inside under braking. He's moving over to the left, and uh, he's definitely got that position. Beery's going to have to see that and uh, stay back in second but uh, I guess Bieri wants that position now. Yes and uh, we should make a note that Afanador and Clayson have stayed out on track but their cars are not handling the way they used to so Bieri will try again next lap I'm sure I'm keeping my eye on turn one because that's where all the action is going on. Battle for about fourth in ST class right now three way between Stefan Overgaard, Stefan Morian and William Randleman Richard and I think there was a little bit of contact there. There was a contact between uh, Randleman and Stefan Overgaard, not any damage caused there, I don't think, but you never know. Uh, it's fierce battle and I, I, while you were talking, I was watching the uh, first and second place. It looks to me very much like Stevenson has got, uh, uh, he's found out where he can attack. And part of the, uh, one of the places he can uh, certainly make up some time on Carl Williamson is where they are right now, Samuel, which is the exit onto the oval. Once again, he seems to close up pretty much on that, but uh, uh, not this time so much. And they've got a lap car in front of them there. I think that's Philip Carpenter. I'm not sure. But uh, Stevenson better hurry up. There's not much time left. I'm going to say with 90% certainty that when these two ST cars cross the line, there's about two laps left to go. Patrick was taking a look on Brian again for the lead, Kevin, but couldn't make it at this time. No, he definitely forced Brian Stradbeck to take the suboptimal defensive line into turn one, but uh, Barry wasn't able to do anything about it. 
but uh, what I have seen is that Bieri is very much better under braking for this final hairpin that they're approaching right now than Stradbeck is, and that's really allowing him a good run onto uh, onto the banking and into the trioval. So I think Bieri wants to kind of maximize on that. As we see it once again, Stradbeck misses the apex. Bieri gets a good launch through there, run through there, and he's right up on Stradbeck's bumper to take that uh, take that draft possibly away from him. The one driver in this race that doesn't have a teammate could be the one driver who wins it, if I, if my mind remembers correctly. Ah, uh, guys, we have an accident here. William Randleman, we, it, it was actually Stefan Overgaard getting loose on the entry to turn two, and William Randleman did tag him, so there's a bit of an accident there, and these guys uh, did lose a significant amount of time through that. GS battle for the lead, this could be it, I believe this is a white flag and on the outside of Brian Strawback is Patrick Beery, it's going to be a battle of the brakes, Patrick winning it right now, they're going to be side by side through the first part of this chicane, has Brian cleared him, no he hasn't, he's got the undesirable line through the right hand in the chicane, but can he clear him now, yes he can. Patrick is going to have to try and outbreak him into one of his hairpins or pass him into in turn one. That's, of course, if this is the final lap, Kevin. I think it is. I'm with you. I believe this is the final lap. We are under 60 seconds to go. I think they just barely got it. Barry got, gets him into the hairpin, gets Stradbeck on the outside. Stradbeck is going to be on the uh, preferred line, it looks like, into the hairpin if he can hang on a little bit. But right now, Barry, Patrick Barry is our overall leader. Yes, and yeah. I'm also watching ST. Go ahead, Richard. Yeah, ST, James Stevenson is closed right up Stradbeck on Carl Williamson. I'm sorry about that, but Brian Stradbeck took it back under breaking into the final hairpin right there. Stradbeck leads coming back onto the oval. And, and James Stevenson has lost a little bit of time to Carl Williamson. Carl Williamson is a master at being able to capitalize on, uh, on certain corners. And James has lost a lot of time to Carl Williamson right now, and he, he doesn't look unless you can get a terrific uh, exit out of meanwhile, the uh, Meanwhile, infield. the GS leaders are coming out of a final turn. I think it's going to be Checkers here. Checkers the records. Patrick looking to the outside of Brian, but not enough. Brian Strawback wins here at Kansas. Back to you for the ST for the Richard. Rightio, and uh, it looks to me as Oh, that wasn't we... it. That wasn't it. It's the white flag. Wow, yep, I did not racing. expect that. So, Brian, in the lead. Sorry, my, my mistake on that. Wow, so we have another lap to go. So Stevenson has another opportunity, but just looking at the attitude of Carl Williamson's car, I don't think he can make it. Carl Williamson has shown that entry into turn one and uh, particularly turn two and three, he does a really, really good job. So uh, I think that this is the way they will finish. Third place uh, is Philip Carpenter. No, that can't be right. Matthew Reinl. Still ahead of them, of course, Stefan Overgaard lost a lot of time trying to battle. So let's keep an eye on first and second. In the GS class, they are coming out of a final turn, the final infield turn. They're on the oval track right now. I think Patrick's a bit farther back than usual as they navigate their way around their lap test key car. I think they thought the last lap was the last lap too. They were certainly racing like it. But it looks like Patrick's too far back. I don't think there's going to be a change in the order here. But uh, it's never over till it's over. Brian's got the lead. Patrick's got the draft. They come out of a final turn. Checkered flag is in the air. Patrick's got nothing for him. Brian Strawberg wins here at Kansas for real this time. And in the ST class, we have Williamson still in front. We have to still negotiate the final for the very final time, the uh, oval section. So can James Stevenson, he closes right up under braking onto the oval now. What can he do? So they come out of the turn, they approach the oval. I don't think he has it. Carl Williamson had a brilliant exit out of that turn there, even though James Stevenson did close up. It's going to be a very, very touch and go situation as they are on the oval for the final time. Carl Williamson keeping it tight into the uh, uh, white line there. Carl, uh, James Stevenson closing up, closing up, closing up. At this point in time, does he have enough to get uh, Williamson before the line? Carl Williamson struggling. James Stevenson's going to pass him. I think James Stevenson wins this race from Carl Williamson. Back to you, Samuel. Yes, he did. Wow, a last lap pass in the ST field. And it looks like third place is going to be Stefan Morian. 
We're stepping over guard in fourth, and I'm looking through the rest of the ST field. Doesn't look like a whole lot of battles, but what an exciting finish in both the GS and the ST classes, Kevin. And uh, Carl Williamson is already complaining about draft tracks, so uh, I think he's a little frustrated right now. Yeah, I see the comment there. <laughs> uh, James Stevenson, what a final lap move. He had to be right on him coming onto the oval, and he did that. He closed right up in, uh, onto uh, Carl Williamson just coming onto the oval. He lost a little bit of time as James, uh, sorry, Carl Williamson started to pull away, but then he closed dramatically and managed that last lap uh, pass just before the start finish line so uh, a good finish from the st class brilliant racing from those two yeah and it, it seems even james isn't the biggest roval fan but i'm sure he'll take the win certainly after not having the greatest of races last uh, the other week at uh i forget what track they were at the other week but uh yeah james just able to pip him that'll certainly help him in the points gives him a cup and uh Gave us something to shout about. Uh, we're going to have post-race interviews uh, for you here in the moment. But first, we're going to let the drivers drive back to their pit stalls. I believe we're going to take a quick break and come back here to the Kansas Road to wrap it all up for you. And make sense of uh, what was quite an exciting race at Kansas today.
Welcome back to Kansas once again, where we just witnessed an exciting, but also a bit of a controversial race at, here at Kansas. We'll get to that in a moment. First of all, we're going to take a look at our uh, finishing results. GS uh, rounded up the top seven overall spots with Brian Strobeck at beating Patrick Beery to the line by just over tenths of a second. Elliot Huffman had a quiet race into third. Then Jeff Jacobs and James Brown rounded out the top five. German uh, Fanador, Russell Clayson... And then, and then, uh, and then after that comes the ST field, Richard. That is correct. And the win was taken today by James Stevenson in a last second overtaking move over Carl Williamson in second place. Matthew Reinal, a very good third place for him. Stefan Morien in fourth place. Dexter Castro finished in fifth place. Uh, William Randleman, and there's a bit of argument between Dexter and William. Uh, William Randleman finished in 6th, Ed Barras in 7th, Tom Eckline in 8th, Stefan Overgaard disappointing for him in 9th, David Wammond in 10th place, Marco Mogren with internet problems in 11th place, uh, Wes Eric, quite a number of laps down in 12th, Philip Carpenter in 13th, and Hang Hao Tao did not finish. And also the GS DNFs were uh, Ray Prado, or at least uh, multiple laps down were Ray Prado, Steve Brown, Randolph Trenoworth, and Todd Hunsarenko, who was unable to make the start of a race. Now, we will mention Stefan Overgaard, who placed ninth place in the ST field, I believe. He was running about third or fourth when they took a white flag, which, of course, I thought was the uh, checkered flag. Apparently, so did Stefan, and he didn't complete the f last lap, and that is why he lost about eight positions on that final uh, final lap. Let's talk to him about that to get confirmation on that. Um, actually, no, we are going to bring in a different driver instead, as our post-race interviews are taking place, and that is James Stevenson, our ST winner. Uh, congratulations, James. Can you hear us? Yes, guys, I can. All right, did... Um, coming out of a final turn, I'm sure you and Carl Williamson both knew it was going to come down to the line. Did you think uh, you were going to be able to pull that pass off? I was feeling pretty confident because uh, I was about two to three tenths quicker than Carl through the, the run under the oval every lap. And then I was just backing out of the throttle and just sitting in behind him, being patient and waiting for the last lap. So uh, I was pretty confident I could do it, but um, it was only just. Yes, very close indeed. Uh, I don't have the exact time on my screen, unfortunately, but it, it certainly made for an exciting finish. Um, we're wondering here in the broadcast booth, was there a bit of confusion as to when the race was finishing? Because it seemed the timer expired right as the white flag went out. Uh, there was no confusion. The white flag came out pretty much when we expected it to, and we raced to the line. All right, well, uh, what did you think of this track? A roval certainly provide um, a different kind of racing than what the typical road course does. I can't say I'm a fan of the track. Um, there's no real, there's nothing anywhere in terms of markings on the track or on the track side to use as braking markers, so it's very difficult to be consistent. Um, the infield had next to no grip at all on the track surface and the oval was just way too long, making it very easy to make a pass. Well, certainly work to your advantage at the end there, it seems. But um, are there any sponsors you'd like to thank? Any shout-outs you'd like to give? I'd like to thank my sponsor, Castrol. Um, give a big sorry to Stefan. I gave him a bit of a balk on that last restart, which meant he dropped back in the pack a bit. Um, and say hi to Richard here in the booth and uh, um, Stephen Asbury, who's at, uh, back at home and not able to race with us at the moment. Would you if like I to can say... just jump in for a second there, Samuel. I can confirm that the uh, the gap between James and Carl was 28 thousandths of a second at the line. Well, certainly made it exciting from a um, from a broadcasting standpoint. I don't know how it felt behind the wheel there between James and Carl. I I want to add one other thing. I noticed James. There was a lot of um, a lot of traffic, ST versus GS. Did that did that throw anything else into the race as far as how you had to think about winning this thing? Oh, well, early on, it uh, allowed Carl to get a break uh, that was bigger than the draft due to the GS getting in between us all the time. But the last caution there brought us all back together and we were able to go for it. Yeah. All right, well, congratulations, James, and thanks for coming to talk to us. Thanks, guys.
All right, coming next into the uh, broadcast booth here is Stefan Overgaard, who I believe finished ninth in the ST field. Um, Richard, would you like to speak with Stefan? Certainly would. Stefan, uh, a little bit of a mixed result for you here today. Uh, you were running strongly up front, in uh, mostly in second or third place uh, through most of the race, but then it kind of all fell apart right at the end there. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah. First of all, I had a um, thing with Steve Brown who uh, came uh, and lapped me and uh, William Randleman and uh, made a bit of off track, and I also had to take the off track and uh, spun the car and hit Randleman. So sorry about that. And then I totally uh, missed the white flag. I heard Elliot Hoffman call out the white flag, and I just headed into the pits uh, one lap early. So that's why I headed down to nine. Yeah, well, commiserations on that. Uh, it has been difficult. Uh, if you remember the last race at uh, Road America, there was also a lot of confusion uh, about when the white flag was flying and so on. So it's, um, it's something that the league admins ne probably need to look at. But uh, generally speaking, you were, you were strong today. Um, I thought that you would most definitely finish on the podium. Uh, that did not happen, so commiserations to you. How does this actually harm your championship hopes? Uh, I knew uh, already going into this one that I don't really have any chance because uh, I'll miss next week's uh, race. Um, so James will really get a, has, um, a bigger lead over me. Okay. Well, Stefan, I'm pretty sure that you are a little bit disappointed with the race today. But uh, that's the way things go. So thank you very much for talking to us, and we will let you go. Thanks. Back to you, Samuel. Yes, and uh, our third interview we got here is the driver who placed third in the ST field. A very quiet race, but nonetheless, a positive result for Matthew Reinhold. Uh, Matt, how, how does it feel getting the podium here at Kansas? Good. It's always good to be on the podium. It doesn't happen very often. I don't get to speak to you too much, but uh, hey, thank you. I want to thank you guys for the great work you do in the broadcasts, and also uh, thanks to Wes and my teammate Tom. User left your channel. Yeah. Now we we noticed on the late restart there, Matt, that you fell back a little bit and then kind of rallied back at the very end to to get that finish. Um. Uh, what you having a bit of issue with the uh, tires? Uh, I I would say that it's uh, you know I don't really start off real strong. I do a lot better on the longer runs um, and on the back back once I'm able to get back up with somebody. It, 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 Technical this problem. Type of track was was uh, favorable for me. Yeah, uh, we've got to confess, uh, Matt, we're having a little bit of technical issues getting all of your answer in, but um, we would like to congratulate you on your third place finish and um, it just ask you if you had anyone you'd like to thank for making this happen. I got to thank, you know, thank my wife, thank Tom Eckline and Russell Clayson, who uh, raced with in the early bird, and thanks for Wes, too. Okay, and with us in the booth is Str Brian Strodbeck, our uh, winner of GS. Uh, Brian, that was a fantastic race you had out there today. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, as much as I really don't like this track, it sure uh, I think we put on a good show today. Yeah, you and Patrick Berry uh, absolutely were having a great battle. It was a hoot to watch as uh, you kind of kept breaking Patrick a little bit, and he kept kind of catching up to you in the draft. Uh, were you? Uh, did you feel like you were really pushing hard out there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was uh, giving it 110%. The, the, the beginning of the race, I was kind of just hanging back behind him because I knew if there was no yellows, uh, it was not going to It was gonna be a two-stop race because I don't think I could have made it on one stop so i was trying to conserve a little fuel and then that yellow came out and tightened everything back up so it, it all worked out in the end for me yeah it absolutely did even though uh wasn't much in, in difference between the two of you less than uh, an eighth of a second across the start finish uh but it was even closer on the uh almost the next to last lap 
Yeah, I uh, I got to check the replay. I didn't have to. I didn't have a chance to look at it yet. Uh, but that uh, turn one in the last lap, I don't know if I gave him enough room. So we touched a little bit, and that kind of set me a little weird. And I think it sent him a little weird. And then, uh, I think I was pretty comfortable had had him from there. Uh, as long as you stay on the inside on the uh, on the oval, it's really hard to uh, pass on the outside. Well, congratulations on your first win this season, Brian. Thank you very much. Well, that about sums it up for our post-race interviews, but I want to talk to my two co-commentators here, uh, Kevin Brown and Richard Losper. Kevin, uh, before the race, we were talking about how none of us were really a huge fan of this track. What did you think of a race today? Well, uh, you're right. I'm not a fan of the track, but uh, I am a fan of the fact that it's got a big draft section and can put on some good racing. And we did get to see some good racing, so uh, I'm, I'm glad that we got that part at least. Richard Losper, um, the finish between James Stevenson and Carl Williamson was uh, probably one of the closest we'll see all season. Uh, I'm sure you were having a blast calling the uh, fi final race down to the finish line there. Absolutely. Um, I'm in full agreement with Kevin there. The track, I don't think you find has many fans, but certainly it did uh, allow for some pretty good racing with that huge draft uh, down three quarters, at least three quarters of the oval. Yes, that finish between James Stevenson and Carl Williamson. I did not honestly think that James had enough to catch Carl, but uh, he proved me wrong and uh, got a 28 thousands of a second win over uh, Carl Williamson. So a great finish, some great racing, some uh, really interesting battles that we were able to call. So I'm highly satisfied with this race, Samuel. Yes, and uh, I've got to agree with you on the ST finish here. Go ahead, uh, folks at home, blink your eyes, and you just missed 0 0.028 seconds, most likely. Anyhow, we couldn't make this broadcast happen on our own, so we would like to give a few thanks out before we part here today. We would like to thank Safecraft Racing for sponsoring this series, and also Wes Eric for hosting it. Also, thanks to iRacing.com, XSplit, Twitch.tv, Audio Technica, and Ava Media for providing us with everything we need in order to make this broadcast happen. I would like to give my personal thanks to the rest of the GSRC crew. If you liked what you saw here today, be sure to visit our site at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com, follow us on Twitter at GSR Channel, and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Global Sim Racing Channel. We would like to thank a few people for providing us with the music you heard here during this broadcast. Eric Ketcom, whose music can not only be found here on GSRC, but also in TV commercials, movie trailers, iTunes and Spotify. If you like our music, tell him where you heard it at ericketcom.com. Casey Lalonde also provides us with some fantastic music for our broadcast. You can find more of his music at caseylalonde.bandcamp.com. The Continental Series will return on December 7th at Laguna Seca at 3pm Pacific Time. Be sure not to miss it. Our next broadcast will be next Saturday, November 30th at 10am Pacific Time when the Blondies MX-5 World Tour take on the twisty heels at the infamous Road at Manor. So until then, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.